people, how are you? Long time without doing an English review, but this book kind of deserves it. So here I am, I'm doing it in English. Um, and I'm presenting you the first book of the Expanse series. It's Leviathan Wicks, and I'm going to read this part, and then I'm going to comment some things with you. Humanity has colonized the solar system, Mars, the Moon, the asteroid belt, and beyond. But the stars are still out of our reach. Jim Holden is an officer or a nice miner making runs from the rings of Saturn to the mining stations of the belt. When he and his crew stumble upon a derelict ship, the Scopuli, they find themselves in possession of a secret they never wanted. A secret that someone is willing to kill for, and kill on a scale unfathomable to Jim and his crew. What is brewing in the system? Unless Jim can find a way who left, can find out who left the ship and why. Detective Miller, Miller is looking for a girl. One girl in a system of billions, but her parents have money, and money talks. When the trial leads him to the Scopuli and rebels sympathizer Holden, he realizes that this girl might hold the key to everything. To key, the key to everything. Holden and Miller must thread the needle between the head government, the outer planet revolutionaries, and secretive corporations, and the odds are against them. But out in the belt, the rules are different, and one, is and one small ship can change the fate of the universe. As you can see in this first book, uh, we are going to have it to be very character heavy between Miller and Holden. In upcoming books, uh, the action gets um, more equal between different characters. We find Holden, Abbasarala, Bobby, Fred, like more characters and um, it's more different voices we are going to find there. But in this one, um, what we find is uh, one Captain Miller, one Captain Holden, um, their views, their experiences, they kind of interlock. Uh, and I think that it's good because Miller, it's like this, this character, this detective who has seen all the horrors humanity has to offer, all the pain that we can inflict to each other, and he has lost hope. He thinks that there is nothing left for us, that we are like a doomed race. And Howling, on the other hand, he th he's an uh, uh, sorry, he's an idealist. Idealist, idealist. I don't know how to pronounce that, <laughs> but he's a, a person who believes that humans can be good, that we are inherently good, and that if you give enough information to people, people can make the right choices. And I think that they are both right and wrong. And I, I like when they met in the middle, because in the middle is just when everything happens. Not everything is so black and white as Miller thinks, and not everything is so fantastic and full of color and, and chances like Holden believes. So seeing these two characters that are quite far away in the spectrum, meet in the middle, and see how Holden gets uh, some influence on Miller, and Miller, uh, in his turn, influences Holden. That's, that's something that's very great. And I think that maybe that's why the authors um, try to show these two characters through the book, so we can follow them and see how they keep changing under the influence of the other one, but without losing who they really are. And I have to say that the book is amazing, because it's not only about um, ships blowing themselves apart, or about wars, or about colonizations, or what the future holds, but it's a book about the humanity that's going to live in this world. The humanity that finds themselves in a place where it seems like everything is lost, um, heart cannot sustain, the, the people and the people have to do terraform projects in places like Ganymede, the, the little moon, um, and they have to do things. So they can try to grow vegetables and to have food for everyone. And we have the belters who have been oppressed forever, like they are working class, they are like sly slaves for the rest of the planet. And uh, we see the OPI, that's the the autumn planet revolutionaries and they want to change the situation of the bell because they think that they deserve to be a part of the of the of, of everything and not only slave meaning for water or meaning for whatever they want the heathens and the martians want 
And I like that this, that this book tells about discrimination, about why people should be treated different if they have money or not. And I also like uh, the salt and pepper that the <laughs> protomolecule adds to it. Because um, sometimes when humans are worried, fighting each other, they don't see the big spectrum. And in here, the big spectrum is quite big and can wipe out humanity. Um, so it's like, it will be better if we stop or fighting each other and we unite and try to stop what's coming because what's coming, it's, it's, it's quite dangerous. And it was like someone who actually was kind of a god when we were just monkeys <laughs> walking on hell had the power to destroy us and maybe try to terraform us or to change us. But for some luck, <laughs> lucky thing, it didn't happen, but it can still happen now. So, you know, let's unite and be, and be one race. I love this book um, as much as I love the series. If you haven't seen them, I really, really recommend them to you. I have to be honest and say like the four, five, six first episodes were like very, not slow for me, but I felt that the what I was seeing had potential, but it was like, I, I'm just don't getting in. But then suddenly I was grabbed by my neck and, and I just couldn't stop watching. And I have to say that season by season, this series has not stopped delivering great quality action drama space opera thingy. I love them. So I will recommend this kind of book and also this series to you. If you want to know if this book is for you, I recommend going to Amazon.com and reading the first pages of the book and see if it's uh, your thing or not. But if you like a space and if you like the possibility of um, traveling out there and began new lives and if you like mm, characters who are very 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 well-rounded characters that move a story because i have to say the this story it's great uh, this evolution of humanity this going out to other planets um the politics of the book uh, the, the proto molecule that we are going to find everything is great but I think that what I love most of this book are the characters that inhabit it because they are well rounded characters you believe them and you have an array of completely different characteristics and, and, press and characters and different people that make you want to know them a little more, a little better and there's something which you are going to be like oh no, but why has this to happen but it's so worth it yeah i recommend it